renowned football intellect Michael Owen has decided that international football is broken. Rapidly falling out of love with watching international football barring the big tournaments. I think a lot of people feel the same way. Half of these games are absolutely pointless. A restructure is needed. Phil Egan, good morning to you. Good morning, how are you doing? I'd wager no man in the world has watched more international football than you have this week. Yeah, and do you know what? If there's a certain game you don't like, watch a different one. So, Michael Owen, there was other games you could have watched. You could have watched European champions Italy struggle to break their Northern Ireland and do themselves out of automatic qualification. You could have watched Portugal? numerous games. You could have watched Portugal the other night. Portugal's a massive story that we've kind of Absolutely. just, like, because of our own local obsession, obviously. We've we played of... a role in it. Yeah. <laughs> we've got to be proud of that. Absolutely. Actually, it would have worked out better, I think, for Portugal if we had beaten them last week because it might have sprung them into action. They clearly felt after Renato Sanchez scored, that's it, job done. We have Serbia now, we're exactly where we want them. You'd almost well, say they scored too early, Phil. They, I think they scored too early. And then I watched Croatia and Russia on Sunday afternoon, a two o'clock game, which was just what I needed on a Sunday afternoon, because it wasn't the nicest day. Put the fire on, feet up, and Croatia battered Russia for 80 minutes, eventually got their goal, and then Russia realised we need to score now, and then they sprung into action, but they left it too late. So, it, I look. People knock international football. I think the Euros kind of got a lot of people back on side. I know there's going to be um, a lot of talk about Qatar once the, the qualifying is over. Gareth Southgate obviously is certainly going to have to address it between now and the start of the, the tournament next year. In fairness to the English media, it's all over the English papers yeah. today. Uh, pictures of workers sheltering from the heat outside a stadium in Qatar. The figure of £12 being the daily wage that um, people are being paid to work 12-hour days. It, you know, it's a, it's a ludicrous idea to have the World Cup in Qatar and it is happening. And it is one of those stories that, although it was announced four or five years ago, people will start to wake up to now and it's going to be very interesting to see what yeah. happens. I, I was of the feeling when they got it, I thought, it'll never happen. This isn't really going to happen, is it? And then, you know, as you get closer to it, obviously the Premier League have fit, have fit their schedule around the World Cup, which is ridiculous, by the way, the, the demands of the players that are going to be playing at the World Cup. They're, yeah, they're, I just hope they're working on their hamstrings right now because they're going to be tested next year big time. But, um, yeah... Going back to what Michael Owen said, this is the same Michael Owen that you remember he did that skills challenge with Jamie Carragher that was on TV where he's smashing the ball past teen, like young teenagers and goals. He's basically showing them this is how you finish. So, you know, he had the ruthless streak in him and that. And I'm sure he would have been happy enough to, to get a hat trick against San Marino and. Um, bump up his goal scoring stats which Harry Kane did last night the, the San Marino goalkeeper may as well have been that kid who was being taught a lesson by Neville Southall in that video as, as Mike Lone is, is, is embarrassing him like Harry Kane not celebrating after his, his fourth goal I guess a classy touch you'd have to say on, the on classy guy Harry he, 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 he thought he handled the situation in the summer very well I read during the week he was like oh I handled the situation very well did you really when you completely just stabilised your club and that was, that was his brother's fault yeah. Yeah. he's back now and sure Conte is in at Spurs and Harry will be ready for this weekend's game against Leeds and all will be forgiven. But I, I was flicking at the end last night, right? And the atmosphere and the commentary in the Scotland game was absolutely off yeah, the brilliant. charts. It was yeah. McCoyst, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Ian Crocker and Ali McCoyst. Dean yeah. Crocker, is it? Ian, Ian Crocker. Ian Crocker. Yeah. Uh, he was like, oh, whatever comes next, this is one of the great nights. And I'm like, oh, wait until you see what's coming next because Italy are getting uh, yeah. beaten or only drawn with uh, Northern Ireland at the moment. You're probably not sure they could end up with Portugal. But the only thing is, Scotland are guaranteed now that, that home semi final, the playoffs. And you, they, they've won six in a row. And I think if you're going to make a case for the joy international football can bring you. Look at Scotland. And, you know, I tweeted after the game last night saying it's hard not to be envious of them. Just, you know, obviously they've adopted I Can Boogie as their, their song and the whole stadium is absolutely rocking. And We need a song, don't we? We do need a song. I know Nathan Murphy put it out there last night as well. We need something better than the fields of Athenry. We do. We definitely do. That's a rugby song for a start. Yeah. And it's, sorry, at the football... We sang it as a as a funeral, <laughs> wake, party, pissed, like body of an American style when we were being hammered at the Euros to say goodbye to that team. Trap, thanks very much for all your work. It's over now. Yeah. We're tired of being called shit. And then yeah. 
he stuck around for a little longer and took a while to extricate ourselves. But that was a funeral. That was that. Yeah. That was that was a wake. Yeah, that was meant to be closure. Yeah. And and that's when you you sing at a wake the fields of Athen Rye because it's about the famine and the plague and the general shitness of life, right? But we're a creative, forward-looking... Apparently so. We, this is what we've been told. Matt Williams told us this morning, Phil, that we're a, a creative nation full of we are. Uh, we're, happy arts, people. We're all about the arts. So, so we can come up with something better. But, uh, but our football should reflect this. And I think Stephen Kenny thinks this. And I think he's right. And I think Matt Williams is right. And so we need a better song. I was suggesting even get a... a good song for goal celebration so zombie nation is something that i know is played at celtic park when they when they score a goal and it just gets the crowd into it i know somebody pointed out to me that tottenham used derude and sandstorm but you can't sing along to that with zombie nation you can give me you zombie nation i'm not <laughs> you'll, you'll know it if you well give me I, some of it well it, it, there's no words to it it's just it's a chant <laughs> basically it's didn't do it justice there. <laughs> no, he did. You did. You absolutely nailed Aaron it. Aaron Craft, wasn't it? It was a good one in the, the college days. Aaron Craft 400. Yeah, if you think of 50,000 people at the Aviva as uh, Callum Robinson scores yet again and we're all jumping around singing along to that, that's a start. And then we need something that they play at the end. Because, look, put them under pressure is always going to be a classic. Uh, the Estonia away trip, we got a song in the bar. What was that? In the bar in Estonia? Yeah. That, um, that, what, what was oh, no, sorry. I'm, I'm completely just thinking of Kevin Kilban doing Ice Ice Baby. That's uh, no, that not uh, going to be the national anthem. No, that was so pot. Sorry, that was. Uh, I mean, Kev can come on at half time and do Ice Ice Baby. It would be better than the lads doing the... I mean, they're obviously very good musicians, but they're just the, the choice of song was wrong for half time, I thought. That was all. Um, what was the... What's the... All I remember from Talon is uh, John Delaney. In a bar, I don't remember the song. Oh, there was a, there was a, a, a talking heads, not talking heads. Is it Depeche Mode? Come on, lads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. get enough. Yeah, yeah. Just can't get enough. Yeah, yeah that's, I, I mean, take that. That comes from the singing section at the Aviva. Every, uh, yeah, so true. Th- that could work. That, that's the closest one to being a reality, I would, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Well, so that was because there was a bar in Tallinn the night we won 3 0. Yeah. That was a. Oh, so that, that was actually the genesis of it. As far as I know. Right. No, it could be wrong. That. Maybe, maybe they went that's there because... That's a start, yeah. I, I, I think that's a... And look, by the way, I'm not saying that Fields of Athen Rye isn't a great song, but it just doesn't capture the mood. Of no, but I just can't see it to get enough of you. It would be perfect for half-time like, I mean, and full-time and goals, wouldn't it? It's, our, it's not our intro on the football show at 9 o'clock on a, on a weekday. Is it, is it not already the first, first couple of steps have been taken? The seed has been planted? Um, I, I don't know if they use it as often anymore, do they? Maybe not. We we need to reintroduce that if we can have any any influence on this. So you think Scotland are going to the, the they're going to get through the playoffs because that home semi final? Just explain how these ridiculous playoffs. Are going well, to work. I, don't, I don't know if they get to the the World Cup, but definitely they have given themselves a better chance with the the home semi final. It's it's like the the playoffs that we were in, it's where lucky. we lost to, we lost to Slovakia and obviously Slovakia then went and played Northern Ireland. So they changed the format. It's not the the home and away playoff that we would have been used to when obviously we beat Bosnia or think back to when we beat Iran in 2001. Oh, so such happy times. Yeah, so they have changed it, but it just shows how hard it is. That There's a fair chance that, you know, Italy or Portugal are not going to be at the World Cup. and It would be a bizarre way to finish a year, or sorry, a, a footballing um, campaign for, for Italy when you consider that off the back of failing to qualify for the 2018 World Cup, they went on this unbelievable run where they were unbeaten until Spain beat them in the, the Nations League, and then they could fail to qualify. Now, I think they'll, uh, they'll still fancy their chances. When does the draw get made for that? Is it fairly soon? Friday week. Okay. Yeah, so we'll get the... It'll be finalised tonight, the, the setup of the, the playoffs. So you would imagine the Dutch will get the job done. They're playing Norway without Erling Haaland. They just need a draw to, to guarantee top spot. And Norway have absolutely banjaxed themselves because uh, they pretty much have to win be, uh, uh, because Turkey are level of points with them. Turkey are away to Montenegro. Now, Turkey might not win that game, but it, there's a fair chance they'll get a result. So that would mean Norway don't even get into the playoffs. So there's another one of the world's leading players possibly not being at the World Cup next year. 
Kalzuya is uh, raining on our parade here. Gold celebration songs in the Tannoy are bad. If the crowd can't find the initiative to sing after a goal, there's no hope. It also stops the crowd singing the player's name. Has that man ever felt the run of adrenaline rush through his veins as Sandstorm by Darude plays after a goal? He, that man clearly hasn't lived, that, that commentary. <laughs> uh, Chris says, free from desire. It's a, yeah, like it, it, it works. I mean, I mean, it, works. it works for the North quite well, doesn't yeah. it? Will Craig, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that, is that what that is? It is, yeah. Da, 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 da. Well, we did it for Shane Long, obviously. Da, 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 da. Okay. But he just didn't score. Uh, <laughs> Maniac 2000 for the Aviva, says Joe on YouTube. Like, it's a bit, it, like what section are we taking of it here? Because like it is, Maniac 2000 is, is underrated in terms of how complicated it is to actually, you know, get all those words out there. You know, it's a, just a piece of lyrical beauty. It's also shit. <laughs> it is terrible. Not even in an it's ironic way. Form. No, it's terrible. It is terrible. It, it, when you hear it, though, way, to be fair, it's like it's, it's the definition of ironically. No, it's shit in an ironic way. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's not even yeah, yeah. ironic in a good way. Yeah, yeah. I do not have a maniac. It doesn't. I think it's nonsense. Yeah, I, just, I don't see how how it could work. It's nonsense the first time. The kind of awful attempts to revive it again and again and again. Oh, f- Maybe we could just like get Mark McCabe to actually make a bespoke song. Seven Nation for... Army tends to go down well. Yeah, it does. I mean, whoever brought that in for football I think it was the Italians in, o- in 06 that's my first recollection yeah, of it yeah so now maybe maybe they just owned it best because they won the World Cup at that stage they were that, that gets uh, I can definitely remember that playing at the Euros when there was goals scoring so I'm pretty sure the Irish fans were happy enough to join in when Wes bangs that one in against Sweden everyone's yeah. kind of yeah. jumping on board but that's goal celebrations so we need something at the end after a game that yeah. can um you know, that we don't all flock to the, the exits and, and leave, that we stay there, let the players do their lap of honour and we're still singing, giving it socks. And, yeah. yeah. And the players join in. Yeah, yeah. That's what we want. So we Maybe we should ask the players, what song do you want us to sing for you? Yeah. Now, these are, some of these players were on the bus the time uh, Justin Bieber was playing on the way to a game, so I'm not sure if they're the best people to ask. You're, you're, you're a non-believer, are you? And I know, look, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I, I didn't think... Justin Bieber would be played on the Ireland team bus, given does, the, does, the does, history yeah. of some of the songs that have been played on that team bus. Dancing Queen, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was Sunderland. <laughs> I mean, you could do worse than like just uh, pick something from the ABBA back catalogue and just. Uh, All right, so Keane in his autobiography has a his, his second one has a long section on uh, Dancing mm. Queen being played by somebody in the Sunderland changing room before a game. I wouldn't mind. It wasn't even one of the good fast ABBA ones. He said, he came in and was like. <laughs> And they lost that game, so no more Dancing Queen. Uh, right, sorry to go back to, <laughs> to go back to the football, Phil. Uh, this is part of football. How many teams are going to qualify from the, these playoffs? It's only so, three, is it? So we've got yeah, yeah and obviously the, like, look at Wales tonight. Now Wales are guaranteed a playoff off the back of their Nations League performance. So they'll actually need to get a draw against Belgium to guarantee second place. So. I don't know if that's going to happen, which means if the Czech Republic beat Estonia, they'd overtake Wales. But as I said, Wales will be in the playoffs as one of the Nations League qualifiers. But again, they're going to be so far down, they're going to be unseated. So, yeah, this draw will be on Friday Friday week. And then a few weeks after that, then we've got the Nations League draw. So, Do 12 teams go into these playoffs and, 12 only, three, teams, and yeah. only three come out? Yeah. Ooh, that is tough, isn't it? Mm. So it's. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be unbelievably high quality knockout under lights football. That's yeah. international football. It's going to be brilliant. It's screw, next March. Screw you, Michael Owen. Yeah, absolutely. What are yeah. you talking about? I mean, look, there's. You could watch every Premier League game every weekend, and one game could be a non. like no contest at all, but the other nine could be great. Like, you can't just hone in on one. You result. can't England, Also, I mean. as well. I'd say the San Marino lads waking up this morning, okay, I'm sure they're pretty tired, but what an honour for them. They get to play against some of the best players in the world. Yeah, exactly. And they'll get to play in the Nations League next year where they get to play teams that are closer to their level. So you can't just... Like some people are suggesting you, you have a pre-qualifying tournament for these teams. That just makes that just widens the gap. Uh, we should have brought this up a little bit earlier, but it was obviously an amazing weekend last weekend for Shelburne women generally because Ronaldo's shirt on Thursday night oh, yeah. and then the uh, the league win on uh, Saturday or Sunday. Um, do you think Gavin Bazunu is pissed off or did he then go into the change room and get Ronaldo's second jersey? Because he was definitely over saying, look, come on, I've done enough now. These 
you screwed me by winning that game, but I got your penalty and I'm getting your jersey. Do you and think then it got it got nicked? It got it got nicked, and like he can't give out, he can't chase after the kid and go here. That's mine, right? So do you think the second one in the changing room? He went in and was like, "It's, it's not the same, though. It's not my. It's not match it's, worn. No, and it doesn't have the little bit of it's mock on it. No. Yeah. What do you do? You like do you go out and smear it in the grass and go? No one's gonna know in twenty years' time. Ah, uh, we'll always know. Yeah, we'll always know. Addison Whelan has it. Well, it'll be it'll be on his wall though. That he, and he he deserves he definitely deserves a Ronaldo jersey to have on his wall. If he wants to put it up, I'm happy to have Gavin Bazzino put the Ronaldo jersey. He took it. He took his soul mm. the other night. Mace, do you think Gavin Bazzino has like encouraged the FAI to impose a hefty fine on on the girl and her family and just say please just ban it's mine. It's mine. Gavin Bazzino, the nicest man in world football, actually behind the scenes is like maybe that. he could swap her. Maybe that's the thing to do. Well, actually, there there is a shout. But she said, didn't she last week? She's going to frame it and put it up on the wall. Not even washing it. So Gavin Bazzino is going to have to break and enter to actually steal it from from the family home and uh, get rid of the get Ronaldo's jersey but back. Ronaldo ain't going anywhere. Bazzino could play against Ronaldo again. For City, I do. Yeah, but you want, want the Portugal one, really, don't you? Yeah, but we, we could get Portugal again. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. It's been a long time since he's been here. So, uh, the, the vagaries of the draw. Okay, so that's the international stuff rounded up. Is there anything else you want to say about that? Well, no, it was interesting. You touched there on the, the Women's National League. That was crazy because that kind of came off the back of I had just watched Ireland beat the All Blacks. Then I'd watched, I was flicking, I'd seen Croaks come back to, to beat Nafina to win the Dublin hurling title. And then. It was all set up. P Mount could have won the, the league on the second last weekend. They played um, Dublin Waves. They should have won that game. And then they are 2 0 up on Galway. A Galway team that haven't been banging in goals. And somehow they lose 5 2. And Shelburne obviously take full advantage. And now Shelburne can win the double when they play Wexford in the FAI Cup final later this month. So it, it, what was great about it was it was live on terrestrial television. Um, and Jonathan Hill was there. There was no sign of Vera Pau, which was a little bit of a concern. But um, I'm sure she'll be asked about that in the, the coming days because uh, her squad is going to be named ahead of those qualifiers against Slovakia and Georgia. She's actually going to be on the Koi Gig podcast this week. It is our new women's football podcast. You can get it on the OTB Sports app and wherever you get your podcasts. A reminder too that Arsenal and Ireland fans don't want to miss our next Cabri FC roadshow. We're going behind the scenes with Arsenal invincible Robert Pires and Gunnar Starr and Ireland captain Katie McCabe. We'll also be joined by former Arsenal strength and conditioning coach and Ireland rugby legend Jerry Flannery. It's all with thanks to Cadbury FC and their club partnerships, granting you behind-the-scenes access at the Premier League's biggest clubs coming soon to OTV Sports social channels. I was at uh, the Web Summit and a bunch of the Invincibles were staying at the same hotel as uh, we were at and they were all in the bar hanging out. They were like their mates. Name names here. Uh, Gilberto Silva, uh, Campbell, Lehman... Mm-hmm. I didn't see Thierry Henry in the bar with them, but he was in the hotel. Right. So, uh, Any picks? No picks. Any? Did you go up and say hello? No. Do you know who I am? No, I did not. I, 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 ho- I host a morning breakfast show in Ireland. I would love a quick few minutes of your time. I have um, journalism. We have people in in Wales and South Africa who hate us. Uh, that's our that's our claim to fame. Is it? It, it, it is our claim to fame. They would they would love that. I'm sure they would. I, what were they drinking? Yeah, I was going to ask because I'm thinking red wine or possibly maybe Superbock. I wasn't. I'm super bucked. Are you even a journalist? <laughs> no, I wasn't paying attention. No, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, you were flaming, basically, and uh, you were you basically just stumbled past them on on your way out of the bar. It's like I better just get out of their way ASAP. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, what about uh, Dean Smith back in football? Very quickly, with a couple of minutes here. Yeah, De- I I like Dean Smith. I'm not sure that I would put him in charge of Norwich to bring them to keep them in. Is he is he there to take them down and back up? Yeah, I don't think he's going to. I think realistically, it's a tough job. But 14th of December was all billed as Gerard v Lampard, but it's now in a, the different twist to it, where it's Dean Smith against Villa. So that that's something to look forward to. And obviously, it comes off the back of Gerard will be at Anfield on the, the 11th of December. So. Uh, a couple of interesting days for, for Stephen Gerrard as Villa boss. In terms of Dean Smith, yeah, if he if he goes back down with them, he's obviously got previous of, of getting teams promoted. And when he was with Brentford, he was close to getting them promoted as well. So it, he doesn't take long breaks from football. No. Eight days. No. 
I mean, fair play to him. I think it's the right thing for him to do is to get straight back up because it's not one of those situations where he's out of football for a long time where he goes, oh, that guy did a really excellent job. It's the other thing to see how Gerard You don't want to does. become Alan Kerbishy. You don't. You don't. And that was the end of um, Kerbs and the managerial merry-go-round. He didn't really get much of a spin. Um, Gerard saying the right things, making the right noises, or actually it's always going to be very difficult for him not to end up talking about Liverpool because it's all been about Liverpool. Yeah. And... and so I'd say so much so that he just probably can't wait to get on with things and actually feel like actually have a game this weekend where they can talk about that because you said it's not it's not Gerard bringing it up it's just the media are going to be obsessed with how he does and you know is he good enough to manage in the Premier League and if he is really good with Villa then everyone's going to say oh surely he's going to be the next Liverpool manager that is what we have to look forward to for the next few years so. Unfortunately, as a Villa fan, Jerry, you're probably going to have to get used to it. But I'm sure a lot of people are interested to see what brand of football they play. That's when, what he, when he says we after the uh, Liverpool game, who will he be talking about? <laughs> uh, I'll be talking about Villa.